Well, a little, a little earlier, I spoke to Mary Portas and asked her what she was itching to change on the high street to try and lure people back to town centres. What we have to give is something that people can't get at home. And what people can't get at home is, you know, creativity and a social experience. Well, they might, might be if they have a few dinner parties, but what they want is ways that will actually activate them, whether it's physically, socially, through creativity, through learning. So if we put some of those things back onto our high street and give a reason for going to town, as opposed to I'm just going to the shops, then you start to create energy and people. And when you create energy in people, you start to sell them. Back the problem is, all of this costs a lot of money, and in the age of austerity, not many people have a lot of money. So how, for example, where are you going to get the money from to cut business rates, as you suggest? OK, I'm saying, actually, let's think about how we do that. Where we were giving business rates cuts to charity shops, and in some instances there might be 8 to 10 on the high street, all I'm saying is, can we not have maybe 8 to 10? Why not look at it, the town teams, and say, actually, we don't want 8 to 10 charity shops, we'd like three of those that will have the same business rates cuts to be a new business or a business that we really need on our hands. How street. convinced are you that you're going to be able to get buy-in from the government, from the communities department or the treasury for example over that plan to cut business rates? At the, at the briefing just now you heard the guy from the communities department saying that he'd look at all the details. Didn't sound very optimistic did it? Well, I haven't met with Cameron yet on this and that's what I need to do. I need to sit with David Cameron and say unless we start to do these things we aren't going to see a high street of the future. And what the effect is, is going to be on communities and people and their livelihoods. And I think that's a real issue that we have. If How you can persuade David Cameron. <laughs> oh, stop it. I don't know. How am I going to persuade David Cameron? By talking to him as passionately as I'm talking to you, by showing him the facts, talking him through my last seven months' work, really highlighting what I see have been real key issues, and actually telling him what I have seen when I've travelled the country in the last seven months. And if we don't put some of these policies in, we will really have a problem on our hands. And it will be a social problem that we will have where people feel disconnected to their local place. Just finally, you've been pretty tough on out-of-town developments in this report. But you're also advising Westfield and out-of-town development. There's a real double standards there, isn't there? I think there's a double standard. Well, the heart of this, what I'm doing is I advise so many type, different types of business. Every type of retail business I've probably worked with, above supermarkets. And to me, it's important for me to understand, and with the knowledge that I've had, with working with every type, from a Westfield, from global luxury brands, to small independents, to high street brands, I'm the one that can come in and say, actually, I believe with that sort of knowledge, I can really advise the poor player who's been left behind, and I'm doing that for nothing.